Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, you'll learn how to solve day 10 of the advent of code for 2022 with Ruby. And this one is called cathode ray tube. And we are going to like start rendering stuff out to a CRT monitor. But in the beginning, we are just working on figuring out some cycles as we're reading through some instructions. So we're going to receive a small program that supports two different commands. One is no op and one is add X. We're also going to need to keep track of a clock and there are cycles that are related to each of these commands. So for a no op, that is going to take one cycle. Add X is going to take two cycles and add X will update a register by manipulating X based on the number that is passed as the argument to X. And that only happens after the two cycles complete when we encounter this argument. So we have this big input that I'm going to grab and we'll drop into the bottom of some file. To start, we'll read all of those lines and you can pass chomp true here and that will achieve the same thing as passing like dot map chomp. And then what we want to do is split each of these lines on a space so that we can get the command and the arguments. So we're going to map and split on space. And then we want to map that command and the arg and we want to get back the command in the arg as an integer if it exists. And for now, let's just print out what we would get. So let's say Ruby day 10, day 10, and we get back add X and 15 and so on and so forth. For the no ops, we're going to get zero and that's okay because that's that doesn't actually impact what we're going to do with this. Now we can say dot each do for our command and our argument. And if the command is a no op, then we're going to do something. Otherwise, if the command add X, then we're gonna do something else. So what we need to do is keep track of some cycles. So we have our cycles and that's going to be just a counter that we are going to increment as we encounter each of our commands here. And we're also going to have something that we're going to keep track of. But for now, let's just say like cycles plus equals one. And then when we encounter add X, we're actually going to increment cycles twice. So we need to increment it once that will complete a whole cycle. And we're going to increment it twice. That'll complete a whole cycle. And only after we have incremented the cycles twice, do we want to increment our register X. So our register X starts at one and then we're going to modify the register based on the argument to add X. In this case, we're just like modifying that. So this is how cycles relate to the commands. So for a no op cycle, we're going to increment by one for an add X, we're going to increment by two. Now we need to keep track of the value of the register X for every single cycle. And so if we look at this, it says during the 20th cycle, register X has the value 21. So this new thing called a signal strength is the cycle number times the value of register X. And so 420 is being stored inside of there. So every single time that we cycle, we need to update some like cycle tracker or something cycle tracker. And we'll keep that in a dictionary. So here we'll just say cycle tracker at cycles is equal to X times cycles. The value in the register X times the cycles gives us the signal strength. So I guess maybe we could call that variable signal strength, but whatever. So what's important is that when we're calling add X, we also want to update our cycle tracker after every single cycle ends. So even though we're not incrementing X until down here, we still want to update the cycle tracker twice before, before incrementing the register. So if we run it against our example input here and just say Ruby, Day one. Oh, I guess we're going to get back. We're getting back in a numerator. So let's change this to data equals and then we'll P data just to see what we get back. And or we want to print out the cycle tracker so that we can see what's inside of the cycle tracker. So we have the mapping of the cycle to the signal strength for that point. Now, the next instruction says that we want to find the signal strength during the 20th, 60th, 100th, Etc. Etc. So one thing we could do is just say, give me the cycle tracker value at 20 
uh, you know, like plus the one at 60 plus the one at 100, whatever. But instead, what I wanted to do was just play around a little bit with a Ruby class called an enumerator. So there is, let's open up IRB. You can say enumerator dot produce and you can give it some initial value and then a block and it will execute the block. And the first argument to the block is whatever value was the previous value. So we can just actually just call this like previous. And then you can do whatever you want on that previous. Maybe say previous plus, I don't know, three. You can use this enumerator in order to generate lots of random numbers. So for instance, what we could do is we could say, give us like create a new enumerator E. And if we say E dot next, it should give us zero because that's the initial value. And now we should see three because every time we call next on it, it's gonna execute this block. So e.next, dot next, e dot next, e dot next, e dot next. And in fact, if you have an array like one, two, three, and you just call dot each, but you don't pass it a block, the thing you get back is also an enumerator. Now, in the case of each, you're gonna get back this enumerator and you could call two a on it and that would give you back an array with all of the elements that were yielded to the block right? We can take an enumerator and use that to generate a series of numbers. And so for this specific series of numbers, it's saying like, start with the 20th cycle and then give us the 60th, the 100th, the 140th. So every 40th cycle after the 20th, those are the ones that we want. So we could start our enumerator at number 20, and then we could say, okay, we want to increment whatever the previous value was by 40 and give us back some new enumerator E. And we could say E dot take, and we only want one, two, three, four, five, six of those. So take six, and that gives us the 20th, 60th, 100th, 140, 180, or 220. So we can use this enumerator. So we can say enumerator dot produce 20 up to something dot take six dot each do n and this is where we're going to sort of like reach into cycle tracker at n and in fact what we could do is use inject here with an initial value of zero and we're going to use that to increment our sum so we're going to take cycle tracker at n plus the sum and this will give us back our result and now we can print out our result and we get back some value so this should be 13920. And if we run this, we get back 13140. That's wrong. Okay. So are we doing the right thing? Oh no, 13140 was okay. So 13140 was for the example input. 13920 is for my test input. So let's grab all of our test input and we will add that to day 10 input. We have to update our code here so that it works for if argv empty. Otherwise, data is file.readlines. And you can also pass chomp true into here. I didn't know that before, so that's kind of handy. And so now if we pass day 10 with input, we are going to get back 13920. That is going to be my part one answer. All right, let's take a look at part two. So in part two, it says that it seems like the register X controls the horizontal position of a sprite. And the sprite is three pixels wide. So if we look down here at the example, this is a, an example of a sprite. So when X is equal to one, so the row here is zero indexed. When X is equal to one, the sprite is gonna cover zero, one, and two. So this is the sprite when X is equal to one. Now, when X is equal to 16, it's gonna cover 15, 16, and 17. So that's like what X is doing is it's moving this sprite back and forth within a range of like 40 pixels. Now, the next step of this is that every single cycle, we are going to print a pixel on the screen. And whether we print the pound sign or the period is gonna be determined on whether or not the sprite is in the range when we're printing that point out. So X is going to kind of like bounce around a ton and then the cycles are just going to go from left to right to print out this grid. Let's start by iterating over our cycle tracker. So we're going to get 
the cycle and we're also gonna get some value X. And for now, what I wanna do is just print out a grid. So something like, we'll just print out the pound sign for now. Now, if we run Ruby day 10, we get this giant list. So we don't actually want puts, we wanna use print so that it doesn't add a new line after it. And we get a bunch of Octothorps. So what I, th because the width of the screen is 40 pixels and our cycle is one based, we need to figure out what like the column is based on cycle mod 40. And if the column is equal to zero, we want to print a new line. So puts, we can just say puts and that'll, that'll create a new line. All right, let's run this. Okay, this is pretty close. We have an off by one error. The top right corner is down here in the bottom. So I think this is actually cycle minus one because it's one based. Let's run this again. All right, now we have our screen rendering. So the next step is gonna to be to correctly print out what, you know, whether we want an octothorpe or a period. So the X value is gonna be determining whether or not we're printing out a dot, right? So in the beginning, X is equal to one. So here's the sprite value. And because the cycle is one, we are like in range of the sprite, so we print this out. Then when we cycle to two, we're in range still of where that sprite position is, so we print out again. Now, when we finish cycle two, we added, we just added 15 to register X, so the sprite slid all the way over to the middle here. So when we get to cycle number three, cycle three does not have any part of the sprite showing at that point, so we're just gonna render a period. So let's do that. So we, what we wanna do is say something like, if the column is between X minus one and X plus one, then we wanna print that out, else we wanna print the period out, okay? And if we scroll to the very bottom here, this is kind of what we're going for. This is what we're expecting. That's what we want to see. So let's run this again. Boom, okay, so this is exactly what we're seeing from the example, right? Now it says use your use your input and run it again. So we're gonna use it with our input, day 10 input. And now it's actually printing out some letters. They're kind of hard to see. So I wanted to like just, if we print out a space, let's see if that makes it easier here. Boom, okay, E, G, L, H, B, L, F, J. And that was my answer here. If you get it right, it's really legible. If you get it wrong, it's impossible to read. This is kind of a fun little project. There was one similar to this in last year's challenge, but this one was kind of interesting because yeah, the X is sliding around and there's all these different pieces, but I thought it would be fun to play with this enumerator situation and you know, enumerator.produce to generate a series of numbers. So if you haven't seen that, that can be kind of, I also initially thought like, oh, maybe it might be fun to have this yield the cycle and also yield the signal and whatever the, whatever the value of X is at that register at that point. But we'll do that in another episode. This was a, another fun one. Thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.